Hello, and welcome to Weed and Grub. If I was a Summer Olympic judge, yes. I would have given Archie tens across the board. Wow. Tens acro- it was an incredible feat. You hear that, Archie? Archie's the dog, if uh, you're listening to this for the first time. Mr. Archie Moo yeah. in studio today with us, freshly bathed and uh, has a nice new haircut. Maybe the haircut is what afforded you the um, the visibility to see the... You're talking about his pee stream, right? It was an incredible pee stream. <laughs> not only not only in um, strength and mm. Clarity. Right. Very hydrated dog. He's very hydrated. But also he smelled the spot. Mm. It was on a decline and (laughs) it was on a small piece of a pole with loose gravel. And he hit it on the decline, lifted a leg, did almost like a 45 degree tilt to hit the angle and then bullseyed it right where he wanted that stream to hit. Like I have never seen a more dexterous and accurate (laughs) dog in my life. The accuracy. You know, you make me think there's a fish called the archer fish. Have you ever heard of the archer fish? No. They actually spit out of the water to hit low hanging like bugs on leaves and stuff with a little stream of water. Yeah. So they come up to the surface and they do this little... And then they hit whatever it is, their little target, and then they eat that. So I may have been uh, subliminally influenced by the, or subconsciously influenced by the archer fish to name my little guy Archie. Archie. Because he's, yeah. And we can call the Olympic game archery. Arch- <laughs> and it's just a bunch of different breeds of dogs trying yep. to hit specific pea spots on varying degrees of difficulty and terrain. I love it. And I am I feel proud as a uh as a dog person who cohabitates with Archie Moo. It was so magnificent. Yeah. I really did stop in my tracks because here's what you made <laughs> me think of with this fish and these dogs. Like, I love the puppy bowl on the Super Bowl. It's the I best. love Westminster Dog Show. Nothing but like it. Could we please have Animal Olympics? And yeah. we can have dogs doing pee feats. We can have fish spitting at bugs. I want to <laughs> see octopus try and become the color of bricks and the texture of granite. And unscrewing jars. And unscrewing, which animal can unscrew a jar of faster? Octopus. Octopus. Always. A crow versus an octopus versus a um, a chimpanzee. Crow versus octopus. I would watch that. (laughs) 100%. Also, I think that uh, what I really truly love about Archie is that his, his lift his leg lift. He's he's ambidextrous. Oh wow! He can go either side, and his lift is always so high that it looks like he's going to topple over. He's sort of like the Barishnikov of urinators. Like he stretches that top leg back so far, and then he sort of balances. So t- I think he could be in the Nutcracker. <laughs> <laughs> I think Archie has a future on stage. Yeah, he I does. mean, I don't want to share a stage with a dog because nobody looks at the person. Right. They only look at the animal. But um, yeah, he's he's amazing. He's an amazing guy. He can switch legs. That's so freaking cool. Yeah, he's a switch hitter. <laughs> switch pisser yep he's really good at everything what a very how's it going mike great welcome to weed and grub everyone this is a podcast about comedy cannabis cooking culture calling shit out and good peers and uh great holidays yeah thanksgiving yeah thanksgiving yeah. thanksgiving LOL. this is our thanksgiving episode it sure is Did you just come up with that god i mean listen the weed pun world is so saturated that you, you just got to go back to the, the oldies and the goodies yeah Mm-hmm. I got you. Um, any th- you were going to say something about Archie before I interrupted with our intro. What, what were you going to say? I, it's gone out of my head. My brain is like Swiss cheese, truly. I've been having trouble remembering easy words lately because I've, my brain is so oversaturated with all of the stuff that you and I have going on. Yeah. In addition to all of the stuff that I have going on on my own. So I am really looking forward to unplugging and turning off for this week of good food and just chill time with friends. It's going to be great. Well, speaking of unplug, mm. let's do some plugs. Oh, haha. Nice, Mike. First up, the MJs. November 30th, Palms Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. Come see us. We are co hosting the International Cannabis Awards. It's the first ever of this amazing red carpet event. We're going to be uh, hanging with all of the cool folks at MJ BizCon and just having a great time celebrating the industry. 
more about us. So <laughs> we are going to crush this thing. We have been working so hard. Our scripts are solid. Everyone laughs when we pitch their stuff to them. We have videos. We have snacks. We have LED screens with laser lights. We have music. We like have costumes. I'm so, yeah, we have costumes. Costume changes. Come on now. Yeah, we filmed a bit the other day that we, I mean, truly, I had the greatest time coming up with it and then filming it and editing it. Like we were cracking each other up. So yeah, come see what we came up with. 100%. Yep. Um, and then our second plug is actually yours, not mine. So I'll be quiet. Uh, please check out my Substack. I started a newsletter for my sandwich project at It's the Mayo for Me on TikTok and Instagram. If you're not following that, and uh, the Substack newsletter is an opportunity for me to write more about the topics that I'm diving into and shout out other cool stuff that's going on and share the sandwich recipes. And it's free, so please sign up at the link in the show notes. It is called My Sandwich, My Choice, and uh, I'm having a great time with it. I really liked this week's um, entry. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it was really interesting. And also the sandwich looked delicious. It, th pff, this sandwich I was really proud of because it's not, an, I mean, nothing is an original recipe anywhere in the world. Someone's made everything. But I combined like a bunch of different influences into something that what I feel like is kind of mine. And uh, it was really freaking good. It's an egg salad with labna and tarragon and jalapeno. Yum. Yeah. It kind of had all the zings and the zangs. You oh know? man, my my throat swallowed without me realizing ah, it. Yeah, yeah, you got my brain to just like make an involuntary swallow. I will make you that egg salad sandwich and uh, share it with you. Okay, great, yeah. please. Um, so back to the Thanksgiving topic, we uh, are both going to be with family, right, and friends. Uh, yes, and I will also be hiding out in the bathroom. Oh. So I think it's going to be like a 60-40 split between family time and taking weird long showers <laughs> over and over and over. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Say more. I don't know, man. Like, I don't know what happened in this country. Let me back up. I mean, up. just that's just a statement <laughs> in it. That's a full sentence. <laughs> Heart stop. Um, <laughs> I don't know what yeah. happened in this country. I don't know Same. when the holidays went from what I grew up watching on TV, which was like joyous family occasions. Everyone comes together, sits around the tree, pulls Cindy out Lou a turkey, yeah, all these things yeah. to like an ungodly amount of stress. People that do not like each other uh, in, an, in a house that feels more tense than joyful and everyone is there forced to spend money and forced to engage. Like, I don't know when that happened, but there are more people in this world than not when I talk to them that are dreading the holidays. Uh, and I think that is such a unfortunate thing that feels like common occurrence now when it comes to what should be a celebration of a year done well. Yes, for sure. Well, I wonder like, I mean, Thanksgiving feels like the one of the last holidays standing that they've sort of failed to successfully commercialize like Christmas or um, Valentine's Day or whatever, where it's like, you know, it's all about the things that you have to buy around it. But unfortunately, I think in the last 30 years, like Black Friday has really taken that's it over, what it is, right? isn't is it? Is that part of what you're feeling? Is like that? Is that what you're talking about well, with the money? But I love Black Friday. I know it's pretty like it's so fun. It's pretty great. I type in the craziest ideas I can think of, and something pops up for thirty percent off. I mean, I just got some crazy. I went to Kiehl's and got a Black Friday deal. But the weird thing is, it was like two weeks ahead of Black Friday, so I was like, "Is this a Black Friday sale?" That's what it said on my receipt. I don't know. Gimp masks, thirty percent <laughs> off. Great. Um, Sibian machines. Yeah. Up to 20% off. You want a Sibian machine for yourself? I'm just saying they're available <laughs> as a deal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, you should Google it and imagine Mike writing one because <laughs> that would be something else. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, okay. So what are your stresses around Thanksgiving specifically though? Is it just like- I mean, do we want to get personal or do we want to talk about like the fun shit? Where do you want me to go with that? Why answer? not both? Why not both? Why not be funny about the personal shit? Because I'm flying all the way across the country mm -hmm. to see my dad's entire side of the family. My mom's side doesn't talk to each other. They hate each other. Wow. All of them hate each other. Wow. Um, and so we're flying across the country to Boston to see my dad's side mm -hmm. where people get along a bit more. And also everyone's getting older. So, you know, how many times can you kick it with the uncles before the uncles are no longer your uncle? Until they kick it. Yeah, until they kick it. Um, but my mom is canceling last minute because the dog has had kennel call for a week mm -hmm. and um my understanding is that kennel cough is like a contagious cold for a dog but it does not um like why are you missing an entire family reunion f that you could get someone to come in for 48 hours mm. get someone to come in for 48 hours sit there with the dog if this had happened a week ago which is it had why wasn't this plan in the mix off jump and i think it's because my family had thanksgiving at their home 
oh. uh, two days ago. So I think she got what she needed. She got all of her favorite dishes, which I'd love to get into our favorite dishes in a moment. Yes. Um, but so she got her Thanksgiving and now she's like, cool, fuck it. And I think oh. that's just the most disrespectful thing you can do. That's wild. Okay, so so no Thanksgiving for your mom. And there's also if you if you're gonna open the floodgates at the top, and I'm sorry everybody <laughs> if you didn't expect this for an app, but like my I come from a family of people who overcomplicate life as soon as anything is in action. So mm. like an example would be um an example for me would be like, let's say I'm getting booked for a stand-up show okay. and it's on Friday at 7.30 p.m. Got it. Um, the next thing that my family would do that I've fought actively in therapy and through a lot of self-work not to do is be like, what time are doors? What time do I need to be there? Can I get up early? If not early, I'd love to go up late. Um, who else is going to be on it? Like, is there a ticket link yet? Okay. I'm also thinking um, if any, if I, I don't have a car, so maybe I can get there a little bit earlier. By the way, what does it pay? And how many people do you think will be in attendance? I'd love six comps. Like you got the gig. So just say yes. Yep. But then that's when everything actually becomes a problem. Wow. Like you got what you wanted and now there's a problem with that. And I think that is one of the most detrimental things you can do to yourself in life. Overcomplicating things with the small stuff. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. 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 You're just making me think of like, uh, like when we just had Reggie Watts on the podcast, we got zero questions from them except what time and when, like nothing about parking or anything even. He just like showed up and I was like, that was just the easiest, most amazing kind of like come on through. Thing. It was just great. So yeah. like, yeah, he moves through life with like ease and very few questions. Yes. <laughs> and exactly. it's nice. It's really nice. Yeah. Kiss. Keep it. Keep it. Well, how <laughs> See, I can't. What God. is the acronym? We can't remember. <laughs> Keep it so serious. Jesus Christ. That's wild. Oh, I, I fully understand it. I think that that like overcomplicating stuff is like, um, it's it's representative of anxiety, right? Yeah, I like think it's so. kind of when you're anxious about stuff and you just like feel the need to it feels like you're doing a good thing for your anxiety by asking all of those questions and trying to put it all in place. But what I've learned about my anxiety, instead of like asking all those questions, is just kind of calming all of those impulses and letting a little bit of trust come through. And then that is more often than not what what gets you through is just like trusting that it's going to work out. Yeah. You don't need to know all of the details. You can just show up and however it unfolds it unfolds like you can't control the event right by asking questions about it in advance right i feel like that truly is the metaphor of thanksgiving it's also what weed is very good it's for, also by the what way. fucking weed yo i'm gonna smoke <laughs> on that Let me. it's what i mean it's truly like that's the thing for me about who just like having having a five milligram edible before going to something that i'm feeling nervous about because that that is going to prevent me from overthinking and in for the most part i mean i definitely talk a lot but over talking it helps me to listen and it helps me to be just kind of in the moment it helps me to like you know just appreciate being in that place at that time it's really nice and so wait what are you doing for thanksgiving oh man i'm going to hawaii <laughs> fucking fuck you big uh, fuck you you dork fuck you, you are going to boston <laughs> to hang out with a bunch of people who hate each other and i'm going to hawaii to hang out with a bunch of people who love each other and <laughs> I think that is pretty funny, Mike. <laughs> yep. Will we send each other pics? Oh, I'll be texting you pictures of me like poolside and, you know, like on horseback. Uh, Amazing. For sure. I will be sending you pictures um, of me boofing out of a toilet paper tube <laughs> in the bathroom you with the window parka. cracked. Like, <laughs> fuck this. Oh, my God. Yes. I'm going to spend uh, Thanksgiving with some amazing people in Hawaii and I've never been. So I'm really looking forward to it because it's a very non-touristy, like they live there uh, on the big island. And so I've like, I've never been to Hawaii and I don't know what to expect from any island, but I think specifically where they are is like, yeah, I'm just going to experience a piece of the culture that's not touristy. Um, and I'm really looking forward to just, I don't know, seeing somewhere that I've never seen. And I, they're incredible. Everyone is an incredible cook. Yeah. It's going to be just a series of like eating adventures and then a lot of sleeping. Let's talk the food because um, because there's like 20 something of us in Boston, yeah. um, 
uh, everyone who has a good head on their shoulders decided to just get Thanksgiving catered. Wow. Otherwise, you've got chaos in the kitchen, too many cooks, yeah. literally everyone saying what their like do's and don'ts are. And so like nobody is allowed to say shit and everybody hopefully eats a great meal. Although I am really going to miss making some of my like self-proclaimed famous recipes Let's for Thanksgiving. Them. Okay. I make an amazing mashed potato. Like you cannot fuck with my mashed potatoes. I learned it on Worst Cooks in America from Chef Amberell, who I thought was a lesbian, but is seemingly straight now. A, les- a lesbian? A lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> but is seemingly straight now. Wow. Um, I and, guess she's bi then. I don't know. Okay. I think that she used... Um, everything at her disposal to become famous. And I have no problem with that. Yeah, politically astute. Yep. Got it. But she did teach me how to make a great garlic mashed potato Mm -hmm. and how to like infuse oil. Or no, that would be infuse... Infuse butter? No, roast garlic in oil. Like, you know, where you wrap it in the foil. Like Mm -hmm. that was the first time I learned how to do that. And um, I stole a food mill from the uh, Worst Cook um, set. You mean like the, the ricer thing that you Ricer, have? thank yeah, you. Yeah, the potato ricer. The potato ricer. I you stole taught that me po- that. I stole that potato ricer from set, and that is like the most crucial piece of equipment when making mashed potatoes. You have passed on that knowledge, I will say, and I have passed on the knowledge from you. So it's it's you're doing good in the world because I have made your mashed potatoes, which you learned from Anne Burrell. And yeah, you I, everyone fucks with them heavy. It's like, they're all like, what is happening in my yeah. mouth? The consistency, the tr- the amount of butter and cream is alarming. It is, but also you that's why you can't fuck it up. Like yeah. you just keep adding salt, pepper, butter, cream until you're happy with it. Mm-hmm. And then add a little bit more. Yeah. You know? Delicious. Yeah, it's in, it's it's good. I'm going to okay. miss making that, especially because that roasted garlic mashed potato, like the roasted garlic, it gets so soft. And as you fold it in, you just get these pops of roasted garlic throughout it. Mm. And I think that also with a little bit of chive on top, presentation wise, seeing that roasted garlic chunk with a little chive, with a little smooth mash, mm. real nice. So satisfying. Real nice. I invite you to make that for me anytime. You would be welcome to make that for me. Oh, that's such a good point. Why yeah. is it just Thanksgiving? Yeah. Mashed potatoes are an anytime treat. All the time, anytime. I would bathe in them, put them in your bathtub, and I'll come over and roll around. <laughs> it's, I mean. Wait, really? Yeah. Because we did that weird video oh, shoot in Miami that's so where that crazy. guy with the foot fetish. Oh, no. He that had was... a deep foot fetish, Mary Jane, and he got you to go f- barefoot mm-hmm. in a huge plastic tub of potatoes and squish your feet in them. And he yeah. was sweating behind the camera. It, it was such a bizarre thing. I was like, nobody wants to see that. And he was like, we want to see it. I want to see it. Get up in that tub with your bare feet and stomp around like the grape stomping lady. I was very glad I didn't fall off that crazy. I was, I was kind of like up high standing on a kitchen island in the middle of this production studio. The whole thing felt real weird. Mm-hmm. And I did it. And I was like, I know this is never going to make it into the cut because it's so, who wants to see feet in mashed potatoes? Turns out only that guy did because it didn't did it make? I don't even remember. It, if they, no, I it remember. Didn't make the cut. I remember they did the first pass, oh, like God. the rough cut. Nobody and wants that. And the very that. first thing on the floor was the CEO being like, "We don't need the foot thing." Yeah, why are her feet? <laughs> why? No, this is about dinner with friends. You have great feet. Thank you. I have actively tried to and considered starting an OnlyFans for you, yeah. and then just showing up with a check <laughs> and being like, "You should have listened to me." I mean, I would love the excuse to get bi bi weekly. What what is it when it's every two weeks? I a pedicure every couple of weeks and like put some pictures online and make some money. Thank you. Still considering it yeah. for sure. Open to options. If anyone would subscribe, maybe I'll uh, open it up, open it up for people to say yes to. Get in there. It's All a different right. kind of sub stack. I mean, I... Submissive stack. You know what I mean? Can I ask what it is about my feet you like? And I'm not being vain. I just want to know. Yeah. Um, they're like they're... they're like a cartoon that a kid would grow up with foot. <laughs> like it's, it's how somebody who knows how to draw a hot foot would draw a hot foot. Oh, and then you. you see it as a kid. And, um, you know, kind of like a Betty Boop where everyone's like, oh my God, I love a juicy ass and a thick hip. And the first one you have a reference for is Betty. Mm-hmm. Um, or, in, or like Wilma, if you're into like a lithe redhead. Like, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yep. And so I think your foot is a cartoon foot. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. If anyone wants to see them, hit me up. DM me. Just Venmo me five bucks and I'll send you a snapshot. Damn. Okay. <laughs> Fucking rap on that. Tarantino's like. Nah, 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 nah. Gang, 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 gang. Um, so yeah, I make a great mashed potato. Yo. Um, I also am really good at making a turkey. I crush a turkey. Okay. And I fucking freewheel it. Like I do all the things you're supposed to do. do I you pop brine? open the I I've never brined. Okay. Um, I've never brined and I've never fried. I think those oh. are the two versions that I would love to 
attempt another time. I've done both. Yeah? I've done both. They, yeah, the brining is definitely worth it. The frying was, n I didn't notice that it was better. Or, like, I think it was just a lot of hot oil and kind of mess for something that was like, I think just as delicious in the oven. Yeah. Um, I did one Thanksgiving deep fry in one of those big fryers, a uh, whole fucking rockfish, like a 20 pound rockfish in the style of the restaurant that I worked at. At the time was a James Beard award winning chef, Christine Kaff at the Flying Fish. And she did this huge deep fried rockfish that she would then just put out with like um, just all sorts of fresh vegetables. And it was so beautiful. And we did that for Thanksgiving one year and i think that might have been my favorite thanksgiving that's incredible was that fish yeah it was freaking great wow yeah um uh and then uh yeah i think that's about it for mm -hmm. my recipes what do you what do you what are your go-to i love rocking all the sides i love making a green bean casserole i learned from uh Scott, my ex who was from Iowa, he did like a very classic green bean casserole with the mushroom soup and the French's onions on top. And I know it's like three ingredients and everyone knows it. But as a Canadian, I'd never had it before. Oh. And I was like, what is this Midwestern delicacy? And it's sort of magical to me. Like once I have a bite of that, I feel like I'm in holiday mode. Fuck yeah. May I interrupt for a moment? Of course. So I was watching Thanksgiving YouTube, my favorite time to watch cooking YouTube. And Eric from Andre. New York... <laughs> No, uh, Eric from New York Times Cooking. Oh, the Asian man uh, who makes that amazing gochujang chocolate or gochujang cookie. Right, Eric Kim maybe. Uh -huh. I can't remember. But if you watch his YouTube, he did thirteen of the most highly praised green bean casserole recipes, and then he took the bits and pieces from all of those to make his version. Mm. And the thing that he did that changed the game the most was he roasted the green beans oh. before he would cook them with everything so that there would be a smoky roasted note in there along with all the richness and the crunch and all those Hell other yeah. things. Yeah. Hell yeah. Pretty cool move. Fucking A. I love that. I um that sounds so good. There's an Ottolenghi recipe that I learned from our friend Natalie that is a sweet potato roast sweet potatoes and it's got serrano chilies and all sorts of crazy stuff in it that is an, and goat cheese and I think figs, maybe. Yum. That is an amazing holiday side instead of just doing like a mashed sweet potato or something like that. And then I make a mean cranberry sauce. Do you really? Homemade, yeah. Do you really? I really do. I feel like that is the most controversial item of on the Thanksgiving table. Right. When you slide it out of a can and it just wobbles around like something out of a Looney Tunes fucking moment, it's like gross. Nobody wants it. And it always just sits there and then you throw it out and we're like, well, we did the thing, you know? But when you make it fresh and you get the bag of cranberries and you boil them down and you add like orange zest and a little bit of cinnamon and the right amount of sugar and you really take your time with it, it, it's, it sings. So what is the proper thing to use cranberry sauce for? Everything. Oh, okay. It's, it's like the, the gravy that, of the fruit. Yeah, it ties everything together. Like when I get my plate and I put all of the, you know, you've got your potatoes and your green bean casserole and your meat and a couple of your sides and hopefully some stuffing and some sweet potato stuff. And then you just like zing the cranberry sauce all the way around. Really? And it ties everything together. Yeah, like if you, that, I mean, that's the best thing in a sandwich. A leftover hot turkey sandwich, that cranberry sauce is kind of why I'm eating it. Wow. You know, because you went you want to make it zingy and a little bit spicy too. Like you could put some heat in there with like a little chili. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That sounds so nice. Mm -hmm. What about gravy gravy? I love making gravy too. And I learned the trick of gravy from my sister. Producer Mark's arms are in the air. Yes, you can, I mean, when you got a good gravy, you, when you make it in the pan and you get the right consistency and you make the roux properly and you skim it and you strain out all the chunky bits and it doesn't taste burnt or fatty. And it's just like that sweet, sweet, creamy meat ta taste. Yes. Sweet, sweet, creamy meat. That's the name of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking you, of gravy. I know. Whoa. Should we? Yeah, well, let's do I'm it. I'm so nervous. Are you? We have gravy uh, soda pop to taste that we've kind of been sitting on. It's uh, from our friends over at Jones. Wait, and maybe this will be the thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this um, Jones soda was sent over to us. I'm not going to say when, but... Uh, We've we've had it for a minute. <laughs> we thought that today Don't would rope be the me time. In with your choices. Well, we've had it. It might be since last year, but we're going to taste it today <laughs> for um, this very special Thanksgiving episode. Turkey and gravy soda, special release by Jones. Yeah, um, we'll have to see if they're still available this season. Well, it has natural flavors, so I'm sure drop. it's just gravy with um. I it's like um Soda Stream. I bet they just added gravy and carbonated water to a Soda Stream and bottled it. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Logan Gunselman would be 
all over this. All right, let's give it a go. Okay. I'm perfectly high for this. Okay. Perfect. Just knock this back There's at your Thanksgiving fizz. dinner. Okay. I'm ready. Oh, no. Okay. Cheers. Oh, it smells gr like gravy. Here, I want to do this. It smells like gravy. Happy Thanksgiving. I hate it. Ugh. It's disgusting. Nope. It tastes like gravy, which is what it promised. It tastes... So I'm actually not against I'm it. I'm taking another sip. Because it is exactly what it says it is, and mm. props for that. You nailed it. It's... it's Ugh. Oh, it's really weird to drink a soda that tastes like gravy. Oh, there's the salt coming in the, in the back end. They did that really well. They yeah. layered that salt coming through in the back end, just like a good gravy does. It's so strange to drink a carbonated... Gravy flavored. If this soda. was in a gravy boat instead of a bottle, would you mind it as much? Because you're thinking soda right now. Yes. Right. So if you remove the idea of what it is from itself, which it actually <laughs> is, could, would it be better? I think. Honestly, I think I need to smoke a little more weed for this to be good, and then I would enjoy it. Like the way I see you enjoying it, I need to. I need to smoke. Hit this shit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Because I, the more I drink it, the more I don't mind it. But yeah. that first hit, you're like, oh, I'm drinking carbonated gravy. Because it's interesting is what it is. Yeah. It's not good, but it's not boring. It's a, I've never had that flavor before in that form. So that's cool. I guess that's not a bad thing. Mm. Thank you. Oh, what is this? That's nice. That's that sun-grown low THC outdoor from Humboldt. Mm -hmm. It's deeply purple. Oh, and, from Whitethorn Valley. Uh, not Whitethorn Valley. I wish I wish I could remember the name. Uh, somebody else who just won uh, Canifest with this strain. Great. And I, I smoke it a lot. I'm almost out of it, unfortunately. But maybe that just means I have to go back up to Humble and some, support small farms. <laughs> <laughs> nice, to, nice sliding that in there. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, listen, Jones. What would you score that? Uh, on a... On a, uh, on a scale of one? No, no, no. On a scale of I'm having a great time with my family to get me out of here. Oh, I would scale this. I w this would be a 10 because it would give you all something to talk about and stop like arguing about, you know, fucking Ron DeSantis or whatever it is that <laughs> someone's <laughs> trying to have a conversation about. He'd you'd join like, your OnlyFans. You could be like, uh, listen, give me, sure, if he wants to pay five bucks to look at my feet, he's welcome to. <laughs> um, I think this is the exact kind of thing that you need when you are having a difficult time with your family. So on that scale i would yeah I would, I would rate it high i think you're so right it is a talking point i did not mean to wax over your pun so sorry great pun <laughs> um well how would you rate it um i would rate it high too based on that based on like what it is what it's doing and how it can incorporate itself into a fun time yeah I completely agree great job to, jones i need to stop drinking it though because it's actually disgusting well good because we have one more but i don't know what the flavor is because oh. i didn't look okay so i'm just gonna pull it up it's yep. a surprise they sent these over as well at the same time we may or may not have been sitting on them for a minute <gasps> oh shit yo, oh, yo we need, this we is need, a good follow-up you need to open this with a lighter it doesn't have the um twist top okay do you know how to do that i've never done it let me here let me see if i can do it wait we got to say what it is first okay it is jones special release sugar cookie soda um i love a sugar cookie let me so see if much I can do this i'm never successful with this but uh, producer mark do you know how to do this <laughs> it's so dumb i feel like this is one of the things that i should be able open to open a soda with a lighter yeah you've never opened a beer with a lighter no Thank you. Thank I've never you. done it. Producer Mark, you know Producer how? Producer Mark is coming coming through. With his teeth? Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Archie, you should be able to do this. Oh, he has a oh, bottle Oh, you've got opener a bottle opener. There. Thank you so much. Here Hell we go. yeah, Producer Mark. Of course you do. Oh, there you go. That's one. And... I love sugar cookies. Oh, and these are the kind of sugar cookies that you have. Uh, the picture is the ones that you have at the grocery store. Yeah. Where they're in that like rack of 12 and they have that inch of frosting on top and they're really sugary and doughy. Yes. Like that's the classic perfection sugar cookie when I think of a sugar cookie. Much more successful than the candy corn version that I attempted to uh, make with. Thank you, Mark. That's right. Oh, of course. Gravy. You want oh, some yeah, gravy, it's baby? It's disgusting. There you go. I'll just take it with you. Oh. Thank you. When you try it, um, yell out and we will... Actually, come here, Mark. Let's try it right now. Before yeah. we get into this, get on the mic. <laughs> he has yeah. a peculiar... His voice went... His face went peculiar. I'm kind of into it. What do you think? Well, how would you rate it? Once a year thing. Yeah. Once a year. Okay. A talking point. Okay. Yeah. Great. Bring everyone together. That's why he's not on the pod. Not <laughs> not as uh, entertaining as us. <laughs> oh, no. Come on. Very entertaining. Thank you, Mark. Uh, okay. Sugar cookie. Here we go. Okay. Mm. 
I love it. All day long. All day fucking long. I love a cream soda. Mm, it smells so good. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's a cream soda with the words sugar c- cookie on the label, oh. right? Don't you think? Hold one more sip. It's just like a pretty classic. Mm. I think it, yes, but it has a little more vanilla to it. Mm. A little more of like a sugar cr- cookie oh. cream. And now that I'm a little more toasty i feel like i can taste the sprinkles <laughs> you can't taste the sprinkles yeah i mean that's what you know i love it weed is good for is like it's it lets your imagination just float a little higher oh that's so good that Great is job, so nice Jones. yeah mark come on man you gotta you, try you it. gotta try the sugar cookie soda it's and bring a little more energy to your response <laughs> oh my god don't take notes from mike you're doing perfect <laughs> jesus <laughs> took a sip yep see big smile yes. big nod that's yes. a sugar cookie. Hell yeah, well, dude. Well, thank you, Jones. Um, sorry we didn't taste these right when they showed up, but this was fun to hang on to them for our very special mm. app. If you were to make a Thanksgiving-themed soda, yes, what would you do? Would you do cranberry sauce soda? Oh, God. I would do like... that. I mean, cranberry sauce soda sounds awesome if it had all of those zingy notes of yeah. cinnamon and orange and stuff in it right yeah yeah and as a mixer too yes. like if you're like if you're with family and like you want to have like a drink it's yeah. a great mixer i think also i really love a lot of the infused drinks that are coming out now that are non-alcoholic that are either mocktails or cannabis infused they're like a lot of um shrubs do you know what a shrub is I've never heard of that it's they're fermented drinks sort of akin to like a drinkable vinegar which sounds gross but it's like you know like um uh Kind of. Have you had Klaus, that cannabis infused drink, Klaus by Warren? Okay. That it's like got a little um, acidity and acridity to it. That's almost. It tastes like vinegar. I think he's working from the base of a shrub. They're just like kind of drink. Yeah, drinking vinegars. I guess I don't know how to say it better. More like um, what's the drink you have after it tastes, dinner? It tastes very adult. Like adult. there's, it's not super sweet. There's even a little bit of you know when you first hit drink it, you're like, whoa, am I supposed to ingest that? But it's really good, and they're I think really good for your gut because they're fermented. Oh, cool. So maybe I would do like a cranberry shrub. Sounds delicious. Yeah. Uh, pecan like, pie. Wait, that's what you said sounds delicious. Sounded like you were saying it's not delicious. No, it sounds like a great drink to have with dinner. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Pecan pie. Sorry to step on your pecan pie. Like that to me would be a perfect drink. Yeah. A perfect soda. Roasty, toasty oh. pecans, a caramelly finish. You've got a little bit of like a sugary, buttery cracker crust. Yep. That to me is the perfect type of soda yeah. to, to eat. I can taste it. <laughs> yeah. I think that would be amazing. It's my favorite candle. Pecan pie. It it's flies so under the radar year round, but wow. I think it is such a universally beloved thing that deserves more than just Thanksgiving. The candle rocks, mm. the pie rocks. Mm-hmm. Like it's so much more than just one day. And also it's supposed to take a backseat to pumpkin. Give me a freaking break. Yeah. yeah. Stop it. I, I would rate it. High. I love it. I say pecan. You do? I guess that's a regionalism, huh? Maybe. Pecan? Or are you wrong? I don't know. No. Hey, now. <laughs> I feel spicy today. Um, uh, pecan pie would be delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you do? P- pumpkin or pecan? <laughs> oh, um, I don't really care about pumpkin pie. I've done pumpkin cheesecake in the past a few times. I I mean, Mark, don't give me those eyes. I It's not that I just think like more often than not, you end up with a commercial pumpkin pie at a lot of Thanksgivings. And I just don't think they're great. If someone has taken the time to make a homemade pumpkin pie, I will always have a piece. You couldn't miss it. But like that sort of, you know, Costco or Ralph's or whatever pumpkin pie that's usually on the side table. Mm-hmm. Not crazy about it. Before we move on, you make me think of the obscure, un, un, unthought of, but very welcome recipes that we both have at our disposal that yeah. would be game changers and winners at a Thanksgiving. Okay. I think if you brought your key lime pie mm. to a Thanksgiving, it would be an absolute showstopper. Thank you so much. I I love making it and it's really simple. So uh, thank you. What, what would you bring? Um, your potatoes, obviously. Chicken parm. Oh. I you don't know. know. What I would want that fucking fish sandwich that you made. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, you made that tuna confit sandwich, uh, Samin Nosrats. Oh, yeah. Tuna con- <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking about the things that you well, made that's that like a great- I can't forget about, or that butter chicken that you make. Yeah, but I think like those, are, um, those aren't those are recipes for Thanksgiving. Those are recipes for football afternoon, where you just lay out a shitload of sandwiches on a table sure. and people are just like snacking all day long. Yeah. Like that's what I think a sandwich calls for, okay. is, is for like an afternoon snack when you're smoking key, a joint. I don't think key lime pie is very Thanksgiving-y though. That's what I'm saying. It's the out, Scott, it's the... Um, 
out what is it called outlier? Outer, outliers that would be welcome to the party okay like your key lime pie i think would be very welcome at any thanksgiving thank you very much yeah. um i'm trying to think of something of yours that would be the equivalent the outlier a pound of weed and okay. uh, some micro doses of ecstasy no oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like Great. what i can bring okay yeah. <laughs> i'll bring key lime pie <laughs> <laughs> and i will bring molly Fantastic. Hey, shout out to my cousin. Her name's Molly. Oh. I'll see you in Boston. Great. <laughs> you know what Mike's bringing. <laughs> um, well, so you're going to be a guest in whose home? Who, who, whose house are you staying My at? uncle Don. Okay. Don. Are you going to be cooking in Don's kitchen? Man, I wish, but I really don't think I will. Like, it, I, I don't know any of these people anymore. Like, we're family, but we don't talk. Okay. And so it's going to be a lot of us all getting to know each other again. Mm -hmm. And I think if I were to pull my move of being in the kitchen and cooking, um, I would not be pushing myself to get to know these people because I'd be like, I'd be a loner who walled myself off in tasks instead of engaging with humans. Oh, that's a good way to think of it. So you're going to like try and actually sit down and just be like present with everyone. Yeah, it's, okay. I'm working really hard on it. I just um, <laughs> wanted to caution you because I just pulled a move cooking as a guest in someone's house that was so insane that I was absolutely freaking mortified. What'd you do? You know, I was staying at my friend Kate's house while she was out of town. She and her husband, John, are on tour with their band. And I was looking after their awesome dog, Pearl, and staying in their beautiful home. And Archie and I were so excited to just like hang out with Pearl and have a nice time. And the night that they were due home, they were getting in at like midnight. And I was like, oh, cool. I'll just hang out with Pearl and have dinner with her. And then I'll head out before you guys get home. And I decided to cook a, like a last dinner to hang out and have with the dogs. And I cooked a steak. I pan fried a steak in their house <laughs> like three hours before they came home without <laughs> thinking. And I, when I finished, I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Their entire home, beautiful home. They yeah. have the nicest house. Yeah. The whole thing was permeated with a steak dinner that they were not going to eat. <laughs> I ate this steak dinner. The dogs had steak dinner with me. I immediately texted Kate and I was like, listen, I am so sorry. She was like, it's cool. And I is was it? like, is it cool? And I was like, but, you know, rest assured the dogs had steak. And she was like, okay. And then she, um, t she, she, got home that night and I texted her the next morning and I was like, was everything okay? And she was like, uh-huh. And I was like, even the steak? And she was like, listen, it did smell like steak, but it smelled like good steak. And I was like, oh God, I'm going to have to do a lot to be That's forgiven. That's a crazy for move, Mary it Jane. Was I wasn't thinking... If I had done that two nights before or three nights before and given everything the chance to air out, I think that's fine. If you're cooking in someone else's house, you need to like think of those things. Mm -hmm. Don't fucking like fry fish 20 minutes before someone comes home in a, ca in a cast iron with the windows closed oh my god i'm so sorry kate i don't even know if she listens so to this funny. podcast but like fuck mark says you can come cook a steak at his place oh my god any day i will come and cook it was a really good steak i did sure. a really nice job with it it was i, I was but look, I, th who i'm really nervous about is her husband because i'm friends with kate yeah i know john and we like each other very much. I think that might not be the case on his side anymore. He's like, who's your friend who came over and stayed at our place for two weeks and then cooked a steak and left <laughs> like a lunatic? Jeez, Louise. Oh, I'm That's so sorry. So funny. Did, did you do the thing, too, where you like cook it? on the stovetop and then throw it in the oven to finish? No, I just purely, it was skirt steak and I just purely did it in the cast iron on the stove. I mean- That's insane. I permeated their place. Like, <laughs> I didn't even close the doors to their bedroom or anything. You, what'd you, did you like light a match before you left? I <laughs> opened the doors for a minute. Like, oh, you know, the craziest thing is when I go over to Natalie's house, Natalie will often like cook us, like, a, you know, she'll make us a nice steak dinner. When she cooks it, we stand in the kitchen while she cooks it and she closes all the doors to the rest of her place. Yeah. yeah. Like a thinking, sane person. I had every door to every room open and I just pan fried this steak and left. And I was, uh, uh, anyway. I, I don't think people might not realize, but especially in LA, unless you have like a million dollar home, yeah. you don't have those oven vents. You don't have something no. you can turn on above the oven to suck up all the stuff. No. And their place is one of those really cool, but old. Their place is like, yeah, old Los Feliz, cool apartment that definitely like the walls absorb They're, they have a wood ceiling for god's sake oh like my the god. steak hey before i left I, I made salmon skin bacon 
<laughs> steak. Um, I, Roasted some Brussels sprouts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, I steamed some broccoli and... Uh, oh, fuck. I truly... <laughs> took a dump. <laughs> I'm just going to say... I mean, and the thing was, I was so careful. Like, I cleaned the... I, cle- I, I was like, I love being a house guest in other people's homes. It's such a gift to be able to stay in someone else's lovely home. And I had cleaned that, that earlier that day. I'd made sure that everything was pristine and had replaced the things that I'd used. I got them some Maldon salt that I'd use. Like, I was like, I'm going to make it nice, you know? Mm-hmm. I left a nice bottle of wine in the fridge. And then I pant fried a steak like a serial killer. Who does that? You. Oh, Only you. I'm That's so sorry. Crazy. I cut in line and I pan fry steaks. <laughs> I'm <laughs> terrible. Why would anyone want me in their lives? I'm so sorry. I'm awful. I'm doing better. I will not do that again. I'm yeah. never going to cut in line again. I'm never going to pan fry a steak in your house again. Okay. I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> So funny. <laughs> Can we get on from my humiliation and embarrassment now? Oh my gosh, please. Yeah, I don't need. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's talk about something else. <laughs> Mortifying. God damn. Yeah, I would never do that. You, you do plenty of other things, Mike. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like what? You can't think of anything. Perfect um, house guest. Uh, I don't even I don't even sleep in the bed. I sleep on the floor as to undisturb oh, that's everything. Oh, that's not weird. <laughs> They walk in Where's and Mike? I'm laying on the floor. He's in the fetal position over in the corner. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> At least I'm fun. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Um, okay. And, and well, should we move on or do you want to talk more about house guests who stay at places? Uh, I think I feel like we should move on. I'm looking at the clock and okay. feeling like it's time. We went to the OG Cannabis Cafe, the yep. first cannabis cafe that's reopening in Los Angeles, California. We just wanted to talk about it a bit because um, cannabis cafes are back. And I think for the last three months, I've talked shit about cannabis cafes mm-hmm. on this podcast. Yes, you And have. so we finally were, we were invited to one. Uh, we were given the royal treatment, amazing treatment. Yes. And, um, and so we just want to kind of recap what Cannabis Cafe experience is like. Shout it out. Well, we had been, so this very particular cafe with the same licenses opened up four years ago. And I wrote about it and we went and hung out with a bunch of people and stuff. And um, so we were excited to see like what the difference was opening back up. And it seems like they followed much the same like sort of uh, plan. Like it feels like the it it's interesting because it was a soft opening and so they were still getting like okay the one thing was for me I, I arrived and I was waiting for you and I was sitting in a two top and they were like do you want anything while you wait for your friend and I was like oh I would love a coffee and they literally the waitress's face fell and she was like oh and I was like uh, uh, is that like a weird thing to ask for and she was like no 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 we'll get we'll get you your coffee. And so she left and then you arrived and then we were like chatting with our a bunch of friends who were there and saying hello and we were smoking some weed and they brought over water and a whole, and then our, the food that we had ordered started to arrive and we just came back and she was like, we're still working on your coffee. And I was like, uh, okay, at this point it'd been like 20 minutes. We both had a heart out because we had other places to be. Yeah. Half an hour in, they brought a coffee. Yeah. And made a joke about having had to hire someone off the street to make it. Which is not exactly a joke as much as it is like plausible. I don't and know. Possible. But listen. If it's on the menu and you're having a soft opening, you should ha- be able to make a coffee. It, cafe is in the name of yeah. the place. That means you serve coffee. Like it's like a coffee shop in Amsterdam. So you, you walk in, you order your delicious coffee and you get your weed. And like, that's the experience. If you're calling yourself the OG cannabis cafe and you don't have coffee, the, I do. I just don't even know what the disconnect is there. It just felt like the food service aspect was not connected to the weed service aspect because the weed service aspect was amazing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know what I mean? Like yep. the two did not feel of a piece. The 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 food and the drink rollout felt like everyone was panicking behind the scenes, and the weed was like, here you go. Like we were brought, we ordered uh, an eighth of um, some beautiful live soil flour. And we got a um, some pre rolls, peanut butter breath pre rolls, and um, yeah. a wonderful uh, server named Shug. Yep, rolled us a big fat joint. Yep, it was of the great. gelinade. Gelinade, that was yeah. it. Yeah. So, do you want to break this into like two parts? The weed part, the food part, and then overall. Sure. Because I think you're right. The weed part was fantastic. It's three different 
um, companies mm -hmm. all coming together. So it's a very like short list menu, yeah. uh, but it has something for everybody. Yeah. Not just Indica Sativa hybrid, but also like different potencies, different terpene profiles, different um, ways to smoke it from a student glass that is just a big talking point of a centerpiece bong to a wonderful an blunt. An, or an ounce of pre-rolls. Yeah. Yeah. So I really loved all of that. And I loved the aspect of being able to smoke with people at a restaurant. Oh, it's the best. Whether it's a friend and you're passing them a joint and they're at another table or it's just you and I, whatever it is, being able to smoke at a restaurant was fucking awesome. It's always the most awesome. It's my favorite thing. Being able to just smoke openly in public with other people is like, yeah, especially if, you know, if you came from a time and a place where, which most of us do, where you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. It just feels like a real celebration of how far we've come. Uh, exactly. And if you're visiting LA or if these are popping up in other cities and states across the country, it is a really nice place to take people and friends just mm -hmm. to show that come so far coming ness <laughs> so articulate <laughs> the come so far comingness the, yeah. that's my second pitch for the title of this episode okay oh, after like what sweet, is sweet it? creamy meat or the come so far coming <laughs> sweet sweet creamy meat and the some come so far coming whatever ness. yeah <laughs> my brain just slid out my ear it's fucking right man um, um so yeah uh so we please just the weed aspect of OG Cannabis oh, Cafe. And the price. Yes. And the prices were not bad. A great price point for an eighth. I think it was like, like 40 to 50 bucks. Yeah. I mean, well, there were a few different. There was like super, super top shelf where there was 80 bucks an eighth. And then, yeah, some affordable versions. Definitely like akin to the price that you would pay at the dispenser, at one of the fancier dispensaries. Agreed. For sure. Uh, my big butt. My big Betty Boop butt you about butt, it butt. is that because everything, it was a soft opening, so everything was comped and free. There were no bills. There was no transactions. So I don't know if you order that $45 eighth, what the tax oh, breakdown yeah. gratuity, I don't know what all of that looks like at the end of the 45. Right. We never saw a check. We never saw a check. So mm -hmm. it could very well be 70 by the by the time things are said and done. Right. Right. And uh, thank, and thank you to everyone there for not presenting us a check. Like it was very, very, very generous. And yeah. we were like, so and well I did leave a dollar. It might have gotten blown under the table, but I did. I left a dollar <laughs> on top down. of it. <laughs> we threw down a tip. Come on. <laughs> Can't be lying about that. <laughs> it's going to make us make me feel All weird. these people left money on the table. So I grabbed it all to try oh and give it God. back to them. I had someone do that once. I was working at the Flying Fish in Seattle and I had worked this oyster happy hour that we had where you could get a dozen oysters for, I can't even remember how much. It was a dozen oysters for 20 bucks and people would come in and just suck down like two, three, four dozen oysters. And these two young kids came in with an older guy who was clearly like a dad to one of them and he paid for all of it. He businessman, you know, threw down his check money and left and then that I, I watched them do it and they reached in and they took out my tip which was like 40 bucks and then they wrote on the check thank you so much for your service um our tip to you is our compliment on how wonderful you are at your job or whatever and uh oh yeah i i stopped them and yeah. i i got that money back but damn like, right what the fuck wow crazy do not don't fuck with anyone's tip okay <sighs> I'm so heated about it the food the food. So we got a chicken panini mm -hmm. with a side salad and a double smash burger and fries. Yep. Uh, each one around $20. Yep. Everything on the menu. They had breakfast, lunch, and dinner plus desserts all 20 in the 20 dollar range yeah we tried also adam our friend adam ill uh shared some churros with us i know they have like buttermilk pancakes on the menu you can get a bowl of cereal mm -hmm. it's very stoner friendly which i really appreciated because i think last time we were there it was less so yeah it was a little more fussy but mm -hmm. now they have like fanta orange soda in a glass bottle like really fanta. nice stuff yeah i say fanta pecan pecan fanta fanta i say pecan i say pecan and, and fanta 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 oh mark says fanta too upstate new york right Overseas, and it's a Canadian thing too. So it's Fanta versus. Yep. Okay. Good. Which way do you say it? Uh, Fanta. And I, I yeah. And I say Fanta. Mm -hmm. Is that really what I said the first time? Is you, Fanta? Yeah, that's why I know. That's why I remarked upon it. That's ah. why I screeched the whole conversation to a halt <laughs> to point to the fact that you said it in what I think was a weird way. <laughs> Sorry to <this> derail. <laughs> Oh, oh Lord, does anyone care? No. Anyway. So we split uh it. We we each had half a burger, half a panini. Yep. Fries. Yep. Da, 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 da. Some bites of churro. Some from bites Adam. of churro. Mm -hmm. I would say that all of it was awful. Yeah, I mean I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah. Like as somebody who is paying who as somebody who is <laughs> Uh, like Potentially pe paying. Who people are going to be paying good money to eat there. Mm. And it's going to be an expensive bill at right. the end of the day because of taxes and everything. Like it's going to be a, a pricey 
experience. Yeah. Step up your food because it's bad. The churros were great. Agreed. And when the coffee arrived, it was good. Awesome. So I would say go order a cup of coffee and some churros and smoke out to your heart's Treat delight. Treat it as a cafe. Treat it as a cafe. You are not there. Or get a bowl of cereal. That sounded fun. I was yeah. like, oh, that's a fun idea. I wouldn't get the hot food. It's just, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe they're dialing it in. It was a soft lunch, but definitely we, <laughs> I took a bite and I was like, oh, interesting. What is happening? On no salt. <laughs> the, I think the burgers are frozen or they weren't cooked to a, to a smash burger crisp. Uh -huh. If you're going to say it's a smash burger, I need that lacy edge. I need that char. I need it to be burgery. And instead it tasted like wet water. Oh, that's so crazy. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Also, the thing that made me crazy just as a former server for so many years is the plates. We were like seated at a table that had empty plates on it. And then when the food came, no one had cleared those plates. So we had to move those plates aside. And then they put these enormous plates down and the burger came on like a slab of wood that was super thick and heavy and hard for the server to put down. And then the server who was trying to clear it later, it was like, this is just unwieldy and not a great idea for like comfort and ease. And we had no table room to like roll our joints or room for, we needed like a second <laughs> table for our, we, the whole thing was just like not thought through in a way where you're like, this is a soft launch. This is, there's still working it out right but they're not going to change their plateware the way that they need to that burger is going to be on a plate next time you go i bet you money you think so oh i bet you money that fucking slab of wood like the eight pound slab of wood <laughs> that nobody no. can carry and takes up the whole table yeah i think that is a great point as a stoner who knows stoner um what a stoner is like look at any stoner's coffee table during a sesh with their friends yeah five drinks five fucking drinks mm -hmm. a bunch of snacks maybe a wrapper to ashtrays smoking devices and that's what you're going to order there. You're going to get a water and a soda and a drink yep. and a thing and a thing and a thing. And you also have a rolling tray yep. and an ashtray. And a proper table is also going to be clear things so you can like pass things easily back and forth. Like this was like, there was just no room between us. It just felt like, yeah, kind of discombobulated and a little like it hurt my brain a little bit because I was like, oh, I have to like move this plate over to this side. And then now I have like too many things and I need a second table. Yeah. yeah. And then on the customer service tip, everybody looked beautiful. Oh, so hot. And was incredibly nice. So nice. All yeah. about that. Yeah. All about that. And the vibe. I mean, while we were there, we ran into several friends and. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but oh, yeah. you um, almost died. No. <laughs> because you got peanut debris. Well. They have a sundae there with chopped peanut. It's the only thing that with on the menu that has peanuts. And uh -huh. it is a hot fudge sundae that has crushed peanuts on top. Mm -hmm. And I think that you got a gale force wind in the kitchen of peanut dust that landed on the burger because you took one bite, sat straight up, and your eyes went wide. <laughs> and I was like, oh, we're going to have a real situation here. It did feel peanutty. I don't know that it was. I didn't actually get sick because I stopped eating it so quickly and then had several gulps of the f several beverages that I had. But yeah, it did It did feel like there was some cross-contamination, but I can't prove it. So I don't know. I just, um, just order the churros. Order the churros and get an eighth and have a great time. Yeah. And uh, I, I also, th <laughs> I also think that they should change their chairs. I thought the chairs were uncomfortable. Maybe that's just me. Yeah. Look, I'm gonna be straight up about this. What? I still think cannabis cafes are a ripoff. I think that the having a great time with friends in public, smoking, mm -hmm. snacking, and hanging, is wonderful. But I could do that same thing in a park with six pizzas and have just a good a time. And there'll be dogs, and we'll play frisbee. And that to me is just as effective without a two hundred dollar bill. But if you're someone who wants to smoke uh, in public and consume in public without worrying about getting arrested or um, you know having any real concerns about th the elements or whatever, go to the Cannabis Cafe. There's another place too that just opened up that I really want to try called Irie, which is above um, a new dispensary. And I'm excited to check them out because that looks like upscale, like almost fine dining. And uh, so let's go check that out too. So we have a little more uh, to talk about as far as the cannabis, because you're so against it. And it makes me kind of crazy because I see the benefit of it, especially when you're from out of town, or if you're someone who can, who is concerned about public consumption being a danger yeah. for whatever reason. If you're, I understand you know, all of that, but yeah. I'm not, and I'm not going to be steadfast and stubborn where if I have a great experience, I'm still going to be like, ah, actually it sucked. Cause I'm a, a little bitch. Like, no, of course, like I'm looking for a great time, this, yeah. but this wasn't up to whatever it's trying to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's just a fact. Like, uh, I got to be honest. Scale one to 10 for you. 6.8. Okay. That's pretty high. Yeah. It's not too bad. Yeah. What about you? Um, I'm going to give it a 7.7. 7. 
Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. Both of us agreeing on that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> cool. Right on. Oh, well, let's take a... Let's take a quick break. Okay. Because um, you want to support our ad, everybody. We have yeah. a great ad for Black Friday. It's for the scent air. And you're going to listen to it as well as this part where I'm talking about the ad itself. Wow. Double ad. Mike, I did something crazy. Did you eat a whole plate of shrimp and forget to peel them? <laughs> no, you know, I was house sitting and I cooked myself that steak dinner. Yeah. Right before my friends Huge came home. Huge mistake. Oh my God. It was a glaring mistake. Pan frying a steak like five minutes before your friends come home from being on tour. And then the whole house is just filled with smoke. It's Ugh. filled with steak smells. I mean, I love a uh, swirl of smells, but pan fried steak, it was really overwhelming. Were your friends mad? No, <laughs> no. You know why? Why? Because my scent air saved the day. Scent Air removes lingering odors. Scent Air's amazing patented odor neutralizing technology detects stinky smells in the air, bonds with them, and then makes them undetectable. Scent Air has been scenting hotels, stores, event spaces, and beyond for 25 years, and they really dial up the holly jolly vibes during the holiday season. Yeah, the winter collection is available right now at their online store. It includes limited release favorites, Gingerbread Man, Noel, and Season's Greetings, plus the year-round classic, Pine Forest. Such a classic. Mm -hmm. Love a classic Pine Forest. <laughs> Scent Air diffusers fill your space with fragrances for up to 300 hours, and you can control them from your phone. If I had had the pine forest to turn on after my steak dinner, legit, it would have made my friend's house smell like a stroll through the woods on a wintry day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite is actually the gingerbread man because Ooh. it makes my whole place feel cozy, warm, oh, Christmassy. I love that. Yeah. Try luxury home fragrance trusted by the pros by going to scentair.com. And dig this. Listen close. There is a Black Friday through Cyber Monday deal, and you can save 60% off statewide. And as a special bonus, Weed and Grub listeners can take an extra 25% off with the promo code GRUB. What? Yeah. That's scentair.com. Use the promo code GRUB for an extra 25% off your order. This Friday, or this Black Friday through Cyber Monday, craziest deal I've ever heard of. Crazy. Almost crazy. like pan frying a steak in your friend's house. That's crazy. But Scent Air will fix the friendship. That's right. Scentair.com. Thank you all for supporting us and supporting the people that support us. You want to get to the Grubla Gazette? Let's do it. Let's get to the news. Let the me find Grubla my phone. Grubla Gazette. Oh. Archie, are you laying on my phone? We should have held this for a second. I think he's laying on my phone. Oh, who did you text? <laughs> did Obama? I, oh. <laughs> Hold on, Wait, Archie. you have a, Obama's number in your phone? Uh, I have his old number. <laughs> Before he became president, when we were both in Chicago, we would uh -huh. always go to, um, uh, what's the cheeseburger cheeseburger place? In Chicago? In Chicago. I don't know. Have you ever seen that SNL bit? No. John, John, I think it's John Belushi. You know I don't know anything. What are you, why are you asking me about something that you know that? I, there's no way I'm going to know about it. So, high times. <laughs> <laughs> A pop culture reference that has to do with Chicago? Dude. <laughs> Lunatic. Do you know the bean? My clit? <laughs> <laughs> I know her well. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> so High Times just published a study um, that says that ayahuasca could make people less narcissistic. Interesting. Yeah. So this was published earlier this year in the Journal of Personality Disorders based on a three-month evaluation of more than 300 adults um, who had a pre-screening, I'll call it, leading up to it. And then they kept in touch with and tracked a bunch of things from those adults through the ayahuasca ceremony and then up to three months afterwards. And one of the findings, even though it was very small and a little bit mixed across um, different types of people, um, it provided a modest qualified support that there were changes in narcissistic antagonism for up to three months following the ceremony. Wow. So um, it didn't solve anything, but mm. there was a noticeable difference in ego, a noticeable difference mm -hmm. in like how people are focusing their energies mm -hmm. and um, more study needs to be done. But again, um, this kind of, uh, what, what would it be called? Eye opening, third eye opening, cleansing um, experience yeah. can help with narcissism. 
Yeah, that's so interesting. I certainly everyone I've ever heard talk about their ayahuasca experience has used words like life changing. So right. it's about like when we talked to Jim Belushi about it early in the days of this podcast, you know, and he went on and on about how it had really reset his, the way he saw the world. Yeah. Um, there's it's so interesting to think about it, like m- making you less narcissistic because the implication is that it could make you a better person on some level. Oh, I, I think that is a blurry line to equate yeah. things with. You're right. Well, I just think it's really interesting because I think it has been sort of statistically proven that like, oh, I've certainly read lately a couple of different art- studies or articles about how psychedelics don't make you a better person. They just sort of amplify who you truly are. Mm. Uh, so in one case, like, uh, There was a well. There was this podcast called "This Is Actually Happening" that I listened to, and they did two episodes about ayahuasca. It's first person narrative, so it's just one person telling their story. And there was one that was called "What If You Touched the Void," and it was a poet who had suffered from chronic depression who did ayahuasca, and it truly helped and healed him. And it's an incredible episode, and you should definitely listen to it. There's another one called "What If Your Husband Touched the Void," and it's a woman talking about how she encouraged her husband to use ayahuasca to uh, recover from addiction, and he came back a totally changed, not in a good way, person. And it was sort of like it, the mask had come off and he ended up like walking oh, out of their marriage. Wow. And I think we've touched on that on this podcast before, but just the idea that like psychedelics will inherently make you better or more well right. is certainly not the case. So it's interesting to hear that this study found that it would make you less narcissistic. Like that's yeah. great, but also. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons I wanted to choose this as a news story, especially for this week, leading into Thanksgiving, leading into family, Mm. leading into like how people handle things Mm -hmm. like, you know, I know some I know some people. Um, Okay. I know some people uh, in my family. I I thought you were talking about me. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Narcissist. Oh, my God. She's so up her own ass. (laughs) Um, I think what this stuck out to me is uh, I've never done ayahuasca, but so many people have said ego death, ego death, ego death. Mm. And now we are getting scientific research that is also slowly but possibly backing up that kind of like firsthand experience storytelling that I've heard before. Yeah, And I think that's a really interesting thing. Like there will be a time when (laughs) there will be a Nobel Prize for like ayahuasca is ego death Mm. scientifically. This is a fact, Yeah, you know, and that's where it could end up. Super interesting. It also strikes at the heart of why hopefully it will be difficult to uh, corporatize psychedelics fully because there really is no way to make want make people want to experience ego death linked to money. Ah, you know, I was going to bring this up. Okay, because this was a week long ret- retreat mm-hmm. done by researchers mm-hmm. and. Um, all of the people who wanted to be a part of the study entered a raffle. And then however they choose the people, they choose the people. A raffle is like a big wheel. Oh, it's probably a big wheel. Mm-hmm. The scientists Def- probably, they, some of the funding went to a big, a big wheel. big wheel. Maybe there were some balls with numbers on them. Probably. Mm-hmm. That's how they did it. Yeah. It's yeah. real science. And then there was a woman who came in on a little outfit and she picked the numbers. <laughs> and then she announced them and put them in a little board. And she was wearing a little outfit. I could see it. Mm-hmm. So... They did that. Scientifically. Scientifically. Mm -hmm. And um, the people who were chosen, the 314 people, um, they were paid $1,580 for the week-long retreat. Great. So they were paid for the retreat. And then every single survey and thing after that, they were paid $20 or $30. Okay. And so I do, I just wanted to shout out, like, this was the kind of thing where people were like, oh, I'm going to make money from this. And I think that's an important thing. Well, yeah, I think medical studies, people are usually paid, right? Like I had a boyfriend years ago who put himself through university by giving, donating his body to science and doing a bunch of weird clinical trials. Right on. So that makes it on par with other clinical trials. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, I need to get a lab coat. If I'm going to be selling Molly over (laughs) Thanksgiving in Boston, I got to... Figure out some ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have that chef's coat that you have. I got your name embroidered on. You could just wear that. (laughs) I'm sure people would take you very seriously Uh if you walked around wearing your chef's coat that says glazer. Yeah. I'm chefing up in a different kind of kitchen. Yeah. How about it? Um, So that's the news this week. That's an interesting story. Yeah. I'm excited to learn more and more about that too. Is like our friends in the psychedelic community start really like, you know, follow the Hyphae Leak Substack. They're doing such neat work over there, Reggie and Mary. And They've got that podcast going and stuff like the, the knowledge that's coming up through the community is is just fascinating as mm-hmm. they publish more and more of it. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have much more to add no. to that uh, as a very giving open person. Yeah. Who as a, doesn't care about himself. You're a very giving open person who doesn't care about himself. Yeah. Except I have a you new heard segment. It here. <laughs> 
called I'm done with it. Okay. Dun 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 You didn't like when I played the YouTube over my phone. Mm-hmm. So now I'm just going to sing the Bill Maher new rules Why, theme Bill song. Maher? <laughs> Fuck off. Get a new sound. No, he sucks. And I hate it. And you need to find something else. And if you don't, I'm walking off the pod next time. <laughs> I swear you're hearing it here. If you don't come up with a new theme song, you didn't even, that wasn't even a song. You just said dun, 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 dun <laughs> for like way too long. Fucking Christ, I'm going to lose my mind. Okay. Hey, if anyone has a suggestion for a new theme song for my new segment, I'm done with it. Yeah. Uh, send send in the I suggestions. I can make one up right now. Make one up. I'm done with it. There you go. <laughs> oh, shit. I didn't mind that. That was pretty good. <laughs> can we just sample that, Mark, and use that next time? <laughs> I'm done with it. I'm done with clear. Oh. Get it together. I didn't know clear at the airport. You know how you have like general uh, and then you have T- TSA pre and then you have clear. Yeah. Do you know clear is a private corporation? Oh. It's not even a government agency. It's a private corp that slid their way into every single airport across our country and is making money hand over fist selling our biometric data to whoever the top bidders are for you to get in line a little bit sooner than TSA pre-check. Creepy. Creepy as fuck. Uh. We went from 9-11 happening, mm-hmm. an absolute inside job, to- Oh my God. An absolute inside job. I'm covering my eyes for anyone who can't see the YouTube. I'm an covering my eyes. absolute inside job. Oh my God. To immediately having these machines that let you see pussies and penises of people. And now you have to take off your shoes because of a shoe bomber. And all of that was like- in the moment with 9-11, one of the most horrific acts of terrorism that's ever happened. And we we followed along. We said, yes, you can look at my penis. We said, what yes, we'll take off our shoes. What are you talking about pussies and penises? The, the machines. They used to just be a standard metal detector that you would walk through. And then all of a sudden- the, the ones that swoop around you? And then all of a sudden you can see everybody's insides. I don't think they show genitalia. Well- I, I think it just shows like possible explosives then on- Then why I mean, was the TSA guy winking at me? Yeah, what? Right? You can see pussies and penises? Mark is saying Maybe. A little bit. Yeah, you okay. can, you can see like the outline of my vulva. Big fucking whoop. Who cares? Oh, well, what if John Hamm goes in there in a gray sweatpants? Everyone's <laughs> going to be crowded around. A PR campaign was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a crazy PR like, campaign. We got to get him some attention. Let's get him out there in some gray sweatpants real quick. Mr. Hamm, we have an idea for you. Please, what size is your hog? Please don't wear underwear and just go outside and drink some Starbucks. I'm going <laughs> to whip up the fucking frenzy. Here we go. <laughs> Listen, I'm not against those machines. You're against it because you feel like people can see your hog. Yes. Okay. And I, so I've only done it once and it was because I was running so shy, late. Or? I am hog shy. Well, what <laughs> do they have? Oh, I guess if I could like get it, get a little fluff in before I go through it. Yeah, you want to get a get a. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I don't need to know more about that. All right. So, <laughs> so we went from nine eleven mm-hmm. to these hog machines. <laughs> To taking off our shoes because of a shoe bomber. Yeah. And that just became standard, right? Mm. And then cut to a couple of years later, TSA pre-check is implemented so that we can kind of like, because everybody is back, everyone is traveling, the population is probably like at least a third bigger across the world than it was during 9-11, something crazy. And so we've, now we have TSA pre-check that you pay for, you get to be on some kind of list as a good boy, and you get to skirt the general population. Great. Fine. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I'm back at a metal detector. I don't have to take my shoes off. I don't have to take anything out of my bag. I'm just a human being again, like before 9-11. Now, TSA Clear gets to jump all of those lines, but it's not a government agency. It's Mm -hmm. a private company. Mm -hmm. So one of the most massive, important pieces of humanity, air travel, connection, global connection, is now being run and has a hand in privatized companies and it's all for you to give your eyes away for a quick jump in line fuck off i'm done with it okay i'm done with it it's not okay are you a member of clear no and i'm not going to be okay but i also like so you're not like renouncing your membership well we have friends like lisa traeger and i've gotten in like fights in the green room about it because she has clear and she's like i show up 20 minutes before the flight's supposed to take off i breeze in i breeze out and i don't need to take an hour out of my time for travel like she she decided it she it was worth it in the way my that, eyes are worth more. Well, this is the thing, though. Like, what are they going to do? So, I have a friend who, when I started 
my TikTok account, she was like, be careful because, you know, they monitor everything. And I was like, but it doesn't matter. Like they have it. Who, what are they going to do? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right. But this is a, <laughs> if you give a mouse a cookie situation. Oh, okay. Like we went from, um, everything I just said, and it just got worse and worse and worse yes. until they were like, and let's pull a little bit of a pressure valve off of this and do TSA pre-check for people who want it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just too many people. It's a bunch of wieners and vulvas. Like, it's all too much. Let's yep. like release a little bit of this tension again and allow a little bit of space. Yes. And now it's like with that new space comes VIP, VIP plus, like bottle service. Like, when is it going to stop? Like, we're going to, once we have a hair sample and a little bit of your spit, you can actually fly the plane like that's yeah. where are we going i see i see you're mad that they've gotten us complicit incrementally and clear feels like a, a boundary violation of like we were all complicit until clear has pushed you too far one million percent okay. too far my yeah. biometric data gets me in line sooner yeah that's insulting to me as a full person okay <laughs> Got you. You know Heard. what I'm saying? You're done with it. I'm done with it. Da -na 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 -na. <laughs> See? So clean. So, so clean. easy. You don't have to fucking quote Bill fucking Marr. <laughs> okay. You're fucking fuck. Oh, he's so crazy. <laughs> okay. Done with it. What done else do we it. have? What else? I mean, we have a joke that was funny, but let's bring it up next week. Let's get to Buds of the Week and get okay, out of here. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Oh, wait. Can I say one thing I'm done with? Yeah. I'm done with the erasure of women. I just saw a documentary about Cher Height, who I'd never fucking heard of, and I consider myself a pretty tapped-in feminist. Cher Height was one of the foremost sex researchers, and she made an entire fucking several books about sexuality in America. She was on every show you can fucking imagine. She, her book, uh, The High report was the 30th is the 30th best selling book of all time a key feminist in the movement and she has been completely erased i had never heard of her and i consider myself to be fairly well informed about this shit and i just saw this great fucking documentary called the disappearance of share height and it's in theaters now and if you're interested in going and seeing uh, like heartbreaking and amazing and interesting story that's beautifully made it's a very funny documentary in a lot of cases she was in the party scene in the 80s and there's like a gene simmons appearance and it's very fun but it's also like fucking upsetting because why haven't we heard about this woman it's because the fucking patriarchal establishment erased her and all of her work i'm done with it da -na 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 -na. yeah <laughs> Great, I'm done with it. Buds of the week? Hell yeah, let's get to buds now. <laughs> okay. This is what we fuck with. Oh, I didn't pull up. There we go. Okay, here we go. This is what we fuck with. Yeah, like, yeah, I like having, a, I'm done with, I like doing cream corner at the top. Okay. And then I like it, I'm done with it, followed by what we are um, in celebration of. Great. Yeah. I love that too. Fuck yeah. My bud of the week this week is the homie Marley at Marley Smoked It. Um, Marley has become a friend thanks to our mutual friend, Zach Miller Dog, who is a great comic and comedy producer. And um, he, what Marley was helping him with his show, and that's how we linked. And she works so hard in the weed industry. And she also gave me a, um, a code for free tickets to ComplexCon this past nice. weekend. And so I did a bunch of shopping. And as I was leaving, her and her boyfriend um, had just ran to the car to eat a bunch of edibles before seeing Kid Cudi. So I got to thank them in person for the plug. So Marley, you are my butt of the week. And um, thank you for not only being the friendship plug, but also the plug for Great Weed and ComplexCon. Hell yeah. And did you see King Kid Cudi? No, I did not. Did I you hear that crazy news about Kid Cudi recently? No, what? The P. Diddy had his car blown up. What? In his driveway. What? There was a, um, uh, I don't even know. That was just all I read about it. Kid Cudi, no, his, P. Diddy's car blew up. No, P. Diddy had Kid Cudi, that's hard to say. P. Diddy had Kid Cudi's car blown up as part of a campaign to intimidate him because he was in love with Cassie, who was with Diddy at the time. This is some telenovela shit. Listen, there's a lawsuit. I think it might've just been settled, but it was, that's- Wow, yeah. I didn't know anything and about Cuddy this. And Cuddy confirmed it. Cuddy was like, yep, my car did actually blow up. That is like not some made up fucking thing. That's like movie bullshit. That doesn't happen in real life. Right? Yeah. yeah, diabolical. Wow, yeah. Uh, Putin and Diddy. <laughs> Yeah, and Cuddy all day. Unreal. Wow. So it was confirmed. This is true. P, that his P. Car Diddy did... blew up K Kid Cuddy's car. I, I don't know if it's confirmed that it was Diddy but who was behind it, but the car did explode. Yes. Mark is on a Mark thumbs up the, confirmed. Yeah. That's <laughs> insane. Diabolical. I'm fucking wild. <sighs> okay. Um, I had no idea. Yeah. Huh. Crazy. Excellent bud of the week as well. Who's Marley's your bud? The coolest. Luna Stower. 
Luna is a cannabis activist and keynote speaker and heads up iSpire, and she is inspiring. She is part of the movement and the community and the industry. She circles all the boxes and checks all the things, and she's just a great hang. We hung out at the Oakland Psychedelic Conference and had like just some good times, and if you're looking at her YouTube, you can see she's got mushrooms all over her sweater. She's fun. She's cool, and she also just got restricted by Instagram, like a bunch of other cannabis-related Instagram accounts, including mine, which is crazy um, because I'm not posting that much on there at all. All, but it's nuts. So uh, be careful what you put on Instagram right now. The bots are scouring. Don't use any hashtags or language that will make them look at you and be careful about the pics. Um, and uh, follow Luna and her backup account. She'll be in the show notes. Uh, and Luna is my butt of the week. And we're going to see her at MJ BizCon. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Great butt of the week. Yay. All right. This has been an awesome Thanksgiving up. Yeah. Thank you all for hanging with us. I am grateful for doing this podcast with you, Mike, and with producer Mark here at Petty Cash Studios and for all of our listeners and buds who come and hang out with us every week and tell their buds about us. It's just like, it's been such a journey and it's really interesting right now to be experiencing a funny little period of growth. Yeah. Like it just goes to show like you never stop evolving and learning if people... Um, you know, if you just keep doing. Yeah. And uh, same. I'm very grateful for those things as well. And if anyone listening is, um, uh, you know, it's the holidays are a struggle. Um, I hope that you can either surround yourself with really great people and or really great weed. And if you are not able to do either of those, um, we have a bunch of great episodes that hopefully we can be buds in your ears. And that's not like me plugging us. It's just plugging like, I hope you find some happiness over what can be a really difficult time. For sure. And I think there was a TikTok that I sent you that was like, here are three things that you can do to reset. And one of them is just going to the bathroom and like locking the door for a minute and washing your hands with cold water and splashing some cold water on your face and like just doing like, you know. Like a horror movie? What do you mean? Like, you know, when the monster's chasing the girl and then she runs to the bathroom and she's like, I just need a little cold water on the face oh. and for me to get my head around this demonic thing chasing me. I mean, yeah, kind of yeah. like that. Wow. For sure. I've never thought about actually doing it. It helps. <laughs> Let's drop that in the show notes too. That yeah. TikTok, because it is a really great TikTok. Three things you can do. To just reset. Yeah. Yeah. To little coping mechanism, little tiny, tiny coping mechanisms. Awesome. Yeah. And if not, um, apparently do ayahuasca with everybody on Thanksgiving and uh, your egos will all be better for it. I salute you if that's what you do. <laughs> Hats off. Um, follow us at Weed and Grub on Instagram. Email us at WG at Weed and Grub .com. Our TikTok is Mike and Mary Jane. Um, anything else, Mike? Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone.